This is actually the second video. We're picking up right where we left off. Up until this point, we did not have a minus three at the very end or a plus three. Or, these are called K values. So, so far, we've only seen exponential growth functions that have Y equals A times B to the X. And of course, the minus H, this minus H is not gonna be on any of our problems that we do in class. That's more for algebra two. But there will be K values. As you can see right here, the K value is negative three. Uh, Janisa, what's the A value of this equation? Obviously, one half. What would the B value be? Two. And that's actually very important. That's the growth factor when you look at an XY table, right? So how about this, guys? It, it says right here, whenever you have an exponential growth function with the H and K, ignore H and K, and graph the parent graph, including the A value, using a XY table, and then shift your coordinates according to H and K. That sounds like a mouthful, but let's all pay attention and understand this right now. So I am going to take this graph, and I am going to ignore, I'm going to ignore the K value of negative 3, okay? Now I'm just going to focus in on that red box. And I'm going to make an XY table of that red box. And I'm going to use consecutive integer inputs from negative 3 to positive 3. Please follow along with me. I actually added on a 4 down there onto the inputs because I know I will be able to use it on this particular problem. So what's the easiest input to plug in, Andrea? Zero. Zero. Zero is the easiest input to plug in. Okay, so if I plug in the zero right there, again, we're ignoring this K value. We're going to ignore the K value. Later on, we'll deal with this K value. So right now, plugging in zero right there, what's two to the zero? Um, zero. One. one. Anything to the zero power is one. And then you have one times one half. What's one times one half? That's one half. Okay, one times half is simply half. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is, since I have inputs that are in order, I'm going to use the growth factor of 2 to get to my next output. Okay, I'm going to take this growth factor of 2 and use it to get to my next output. So if I go 1 half times 2, what's 1 half times 2? What's 1 half times 2? It's 1. Whoa, sorry, 1. Yeah. And then what's the next output value going to be if my growth factor is 2? It's 1 times 2. What do I get? 2. And then if the, what's the next one going to be? 2 times 2 is 4. And then the next one? 8. And the next one? 16. But we're off the graph, so I'm not going to use that one, right? So if from here to here, I'm gr like, if you don't believe me, guys, you could take the number 4 and actually plug it in. What's 2 to the 4th? Oh, that's uh, 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. And then you have 16 times half. 16 times half is 8. But you see how easy it is to just do one input, one output, and then after that, use the growth factor of 2, Sarah, to be able to get to the next value. 1 half times 2 is 1, times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Backwards, Isaac, it's to divide by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. Vanessa, divided by 2 is 1 half. Then 1 half divided by 2 is what? 1 fourth. And so on and so on. So you guys should be able to fill it in. 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and then 1 sixteenth. So those are all the coordinates to the parent graph that's boxed in red right there. I ignored the k value of negative 3. Okay? So if I were to graph this parent graph, let me graph it. Let's go with the coordinate 0 and then half. So 0 on the x and then halfway up. If I go 0 on the x and then halfway up, I'll end up right here. And then the next one is 1, 1. 1, 1 is right there. The next one is 2, 2. 2 on the x, 2 on the y, it's right here. No, I'm sorry, it's right here. Let me erase that. That was an accident. 2 on the x, 1, 2, 2 on the y, yep, it's right there. And then the next one, 3, 4. So I need to go 3 on the x, 1, 2, 3, and then 4 on the y, 
that would be up here. Let's put a dot right there. And then 4, 8, that would be up here. And then 5, 16 is going to be way off the graph. I'm not going to put that on there. It's way off the graph. Does that make sense? Now, going in the other direction, so this was 0, 1 half. If I go to negative 1 and 1 fourth, if I go to negative 1 and 1 fourth, then you're talking about going negative 1 and then 1 fourth of the way up. That's really half of the half. So that would be right there. And then 1 eighth is even closer. 1 16th, it's so close that it looks like it's actually touching. This is 1 over 32. This is 1 over 64. This is 1 over uh, 128. So there's my exponential growth function. It looks like it's actually on the x-axis, but we know that it never actually touches. It just infinitely approaches. And here's my growth function, and it grows forever. Now, that is what we call the parent graph. It is not the final graph. The final graph has to be considering or taking into consideration this k value of negative 3. So the k value, if it said positive 3, I need to take this blue graph and move it up 3 units. But it's negative 3, so I need to move it down 3 units. Does that make sense? So where the asymptote, the asymptote used to be right here at y equals 0, that used to be the asymptote, where's your new asymptote going to be if you shift the whole thing down 3? It's going to be at negative 3. So check it out. I'm going to go to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and I'm going to put a dot, or I'm going to put the, at the line right there, because it's going to be on that line. Well, at least it's going to appear to be on that line. So what I need to do is take every single one of these coordinates, and I need to move them down through units. So I need to take this coordinate and move it down 1, 2, 3, and put my new dot right there. Right here. Then take this one, move it down 1, 2, 3, right there. And then this one, 1, 2, 3, right there. And this one, 1, 2, 3, right there. And then the next one that was at the halfway point, this one, move it down 1, 2, 3, it'll be right there at that halfway point. And we already know that it gets infinitely closer to that asymptote. And there's my new graph. So it's the same exact graph, but you shifted it down three units. Why do we shift it down three units? Because the k value is minus three. That's why we moved it down three units. If, we would have, if it would have said plus three, we would have shifted it up three units. Do we understand? So that first blue graph is not the real graph. I'm going to put two x's on it. I recommend you guys to put two x's on it. When you take your quiz and you graph the parent graph, that's not your final graph. You're only using it to be able to then shift it to get your actual final graph. So please put two x's on this blue one because that's not the graph you want to represent. The red one is the exponential growth function that you want to represent. Okay. Now, in addition to graphing, you also need to state all the different, um, what, what could you say, like information about it. Like, uh, what is the, the new asymptote of your actual final graph? What is the new asymptote? Y equals, is it Y equals zero? No, it's not Y equals zero. Yeah, it doesn't approach zero anymore. It now approaches negative three. It'll never actually get to negative three, but it'll infinitely approach negative three. So your new asymptote got shifted three units down. So that's why on our notes, we said that the asymptote will be, if you remember on your notes, y equals k. That's your new asymptote. So what is the k value of this whole thing? It's negative 3. So your new asymptote is not y equals 0. It's y equals negative 3. Now, you don't have to remember y equals k because you could clearly see that your graph infinitely approaches the negative 3 value, but it'll never actually get there. It'll just infinitely approach. Are you with me? So in addition to the asymptote, you also have to state the y-intercept and the domain and range. So let's talk domain and range here. So what would the, the domain be of this red exponential growth function? Now we're talking about x values. The domain for any exponential growth or decay function is what? x equals, everybody should know this, all real numbers. That's always the domain on any growth or decay function. We haven't even done decay functions. 
this is a growth function. Any growth function goes to the left forever, and it goes to the right forever. Let's talk about the range values. How about the range? Those are the y values. So again, don't look at, don't look at the blue line. We're looking at the red line. The red line, where is it at in terms of the y values? Is it up here, or is it down here? Actually, it's above a certain value. It's above what value? The asymptote. But what is that asymptote value? Yeah, so when you say the, the range, you're going to say it's going to be y above what? Above the asymptote. What's the asymptote? Negative 3. So how do you say y is above negative 3 in terms of an inequality? Y is greater than negative 3. And that is your range value for this guy. I hope this makes sense to everybody. That's the range. Y is above negative 3. So as you can see, this red graph is clearly above the Y value of negative 3. Yeah, it looks like it gets closer and closer. It does get closer, but it never actually touches. It just infinitely approaches. So that's about it. That's all you could explain, and, and that's as hard as it gets. Because all you got to do is ignore the K value, focus in on the parent graph. That's what we call the parent graph. Graph the parent graph, and then move everything either up or down depending on your k value. And then once you graph your new graph, you could state your asymptote and your domain and range of that new graph. So let's move on to this question down here. Now let's make an xy table. Let's plug in some consecutive integer inputs. Let's start with negative 3 all the way to positive 3. And now, do we want to do a bunch of math? No. no, we don't. So let's just plug in the easiest number to plug in, which would be what? Zero. Zero. Now, does this have a k value at the end? Yes, it does. So the instructions above say to ignore that k value just temporarily. We're going to focus in on the parent graph, including the a value. And then after we graph that simple graph inside the red box, after we graph it, we're going to move it how are we going to move it? Two down or two up? Two up. two up, because it's a positive k value, positive 2. So let's first get the coordinates to this guy. Let's do the easiest one. Plug in 0 right in there. What is 2 to the 0? 2 to the 0 is 1, and then 1 times 2 is 2. So when I plug in a 0, I get out a 2. Yeah? Now, I could do the same and plug in a 1 right there, do the math, and then multiply it by 2. Plug in a 2, do 2 to the second, then multiply it by 2. But the easier thing to do is to know the truth that if your inputs are in order, then you could use the growth factor to show that it grows from 2 to what? Uh, two, four. 2 to 4. And then from 4 to 8. And then from 8 to 16. So we're going to grow by that growth factor of 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And backwards, instead of multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, what am I going to do backwards? Divide by 2 or multiply by half, right? 1 half of 8 is 4, 1 half of 4 is 2, 1 half of 2 is? 1 half of 2 is what? 1. And then what's 1 half of 1? It's 1 half. What's half of a half? 1 fourth. And then half of that, 1 eighth. Half of that, 1 sixteenth. Half of that, 1 over 32. You get the idea? So these are the coordinates only to the parent graph inside the box. We're still not even messing with the k value of 2. So let's graph these coordinates. I'm going to start with the coordinate 0, 2. 0 on the x, 2 on the y, there it is. Then I go to 1 and then 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, there it is. Then I go to 2 and 8. 1, 2, and then 8, way up here, there it is. 3, 16, it's way up here off the graph. I'm not going to worry about it. But going in the opposite direction, negative 1, 1, let's show that. Negative 1, 1 is right here. And then negative 2 and half. Think about it. You're at the origin, and you go negative 2. Wait, you're at the origin, and you go negative 1, negative 2, and then you only go halfway up. So you put that dot right there halfway up. And then half of the half would be 1 fourth, and then 1 eighth for the y value, and then 1 sixteenth for the y value, 1 over 32nd for the y value. 1 over 64, it's so small that it looks like it's nothing. So I draw my line right on it, even though I know it never actually touches it. It just infinitely approaches. 
Now, this is the parent graph. So maybe you don't even want to draw it. Maybe you just want to leave the dots right there and just draw this like asymptote part. So this is the parent graph, which is inside the red box. What do I need to do to this graph? I need to go up two. So if I did connect it, I'm going to cross it out anyway because it's the parent graph, right? If you want to connect it, go for it. But I need to take all of these coordinates and move them up two units. So let me use a different color. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this coordinate right here, and I'm going to move it up two units. It's going to be up here. So check it out. Let me put a two units up right there. Two units up, it'll be right there. Two units up, right there, right there. Um, Two units up, right there, two units up. So the asymptote moved two units up would end up right there. So which one's our final graph, the red one or the blue one? The blue one. The blue one. So what I want to do is I want to put two X's on the red one because that's not my, that, that was my parent graph. And I want to represent the blue one. Let me connect the blue one. And draw an arrow on it. So the red one was just the parent graph. The blue one's the actual graph that we wanted to do. Now let's take a look at that blue graph and what domain does that blue graph have? X is what? You guys should get it by now. It's always the same answer for domain. X is all, numbers. all real numbers, that's right. Now how about the range? We're talking about the Y values on the range. Or, or even before the range, we could say, what's the asymptote, guys? Here's the asymptote. And you're right, Sarah, y equals 2. So the asymptote, let me actually go down here. Asymptote is y equals 2. So the asymptote is your graph will infinitely approach that asymptote of y equals 2, but it'll never actually touch. It'll just infinitely approach. So. Um, what is your range value for that blue graph? Y. y is what? Is it above a certain value or is it below a certain value? Um, below. Is it? Oh, no. See, the, check this out. What is the asymptote again? It's the y value, y level of what? Um, two. two. So is the blue graph above two or below two? Above. above. So how do you represent that with inequalities? Y is what? greater than 2. And if they ask you for the y-intercept, that's simply the coordinate of where your graph crosses the y-axis. And that would be this point right here. And let's find that point. Here's the origin, 0, 0. So what is that point? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 4. Now, it's dangerous to use this one because this is from your parent graph, right? So you don't need these coordinates, really, because they're not the coordinates of your actual graph. The coordinates of your actual graph are after you shifted them two up. So that's the blue graph. And uh, the y-intercept of the blue graph would be 0, uh, 4. So that's all the information we need right there. And. All we need to do now is flip the paper over to our homework section and practice the rest of those that actually do have a K shift, like these last two that we did on this ha second half of the lesson. I'm going to stop this video right here and pick up on another video explaining the homework. Uh, all those exponential growth functions that do have a K shift.